Welcome back to another episode of History Bodied. We focus on the most interesting questions and topics surrounding the world that we live in. Subscribe to the channel now and become part of the community, so you never miss any of our latest uploads. In this video, we will be diving deep and looking at the history of Mauritius, a country located in East Africa. Mauritius certainly has a chaotic history. Mauritius is still a relatively young nation, having remained uninhabited by humans until the 16th century. Various European forces ruled the island until it became independent in 1968. Although long uninhabited, the island is known to have been used as early as the 10th century by Arab sailors. The food, culture, architecture, and customs blend European, Indian, Chinese, and African heritage, which makes for a vibrant and exciting national identity. Yet, it was only in the 16th century that it was explored more officially by the Portuguese. However, they, too, did not settle there. While Arab sailors discovered the uninhabited forest island of Mauritius during the 9th century, and then by the Portuguese in 1505, the Dutch first began to colonize the island, taking possession in 1598 and naming it Mauritius after Moritz de Nassau, the Prince of Holland. The Dutch set up sugar cane plantations, imported Madagascan slave workers, hunted the dodo to extinction, logged the black ebony trees to near extinction, and introduced many foreign animals, including pigs and java deer, which escaped and went on to establish large populations. Five years later, the French arrived and renamed it Ile de France and began settling in 1713. The island serves as a refuge and supply base for ships bound for Europe's India. At that time, the French and English were busy conquering India, and anyone who owned Mauritius would have a clear advantage on this sea route. The French brought slaves and created coffee, cotton, indigo, and sugarcane plantations during what was a time of construction and prosperity for the free people of Mauritius. Later on, the English did not give up and returned at the end of the same year, more precisely in December 1810, to the north of the island with a victorious attack and took possession of the island. They promptly renamed it Mauritius. During the British occupation, Mauritius was part of the British Empire. The French had developed the island through the hard work and sweat of slaves from Africa. But in 1835, the abolition of slavery took place in Mauritius. Under the English, the workforce for the island's development and work in the sugarcane fields came from India and China. The road to independence began in 1948 when the first general elections were held, and the newly created Legislative Council met for the first time. A ministerial system was introduced in 1950, and constitutional changes took place throughout the 1960s. Mauritius gained independence in 1968 as a part of the Commonwealth, moving to a republic in 1992. Today, the Republic of Mauritius includes Mauritius, Rodriguez, and a few other small isolated islands, a vast maritime territory. It is now one of Africa's most democratic, prosperous, and stable nations. Mauritius has a diverse population made up of people who came or were brought to the island during its history. Many have blended African, European, Indian, or Chinese heritage and follow faiths as diverse as Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, and Buddhism. Before the Dutch settlers arrived in Mauritius, it was said to be uninhibited. Then, during Mauritius's colonization, the Dutch, French, and British brought slaves and workers from Africa and India, with Chinese traders entering Mauritius at a similar time. The dynamics on the island are considered a great example of cultural integration. There is a sense of pride about and unity in being Mauritian, which you often don't see in other countries where there are varied people with different languages and cultures. Even though there is no actual official language in Mauritius, the government and administrative work is conducted in English and taught in schools. Many of the television channels and newspapers are in French, which is understood by more of the local population than English, and for the most part, people in Mauritius tend to speak Creole. Approximately 86.5% of the population speak Mauritian Creole, 5.3% speak Bhojpuri, and 4.1% speak French. Try your hand at some Mauritian Creole basics before heading to the Indian Ocean Island, and the locals will appreciate the effort. There's no doubt that Mauritius would make an extraordinary holiday destination with fantastic weather practically year-round, excellent surroundings, and outdoor activities. All four of the Mauritian Sun resorts offer guests a unique experience, with all of them promising sublime cuisine, stunning luxury accommodation, excellent service, and an unforgettable holiday in paradise. Well, that brings us to the end of today's video all about Mauritius and its history. Did you know about the culture of Mauritius? Let us know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed today's episode and found it interesting, make sure to leave us a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to History Body, 
so you never miss out on taking a trip back in time with us to fascinating moments in human history. Thanks for watching, see you again soon in another video.